Prayer is a means of communication between humanity and divinity. In today's video, I want to speak on what happens when you pray. And I want to dwell on this best on us as human beings. When you talk to God, when you get to pray, what happens? How does that look like? What should you expect? What should be your mindset? What should you know about this act? I know there are many things that could be said about what happens when you pray in regards to God. You know, when you pray, God answers. But in regard to you doing the act, what happens in your mind when you pray? Because sometimes you might pray and then not get an answer and it could feel like it seems prayer is not working. What should you understand about praying? We talk to God through prayer and faith opens the portal for this communication to exist, which I could then say that faith is the network provider for this communication. Faith guarantees the effectiveness of this communication between us and God. The number one thing I want you to know is that prayer is an act of faith that appropriates the supply of God. This is what I want you to know with this point. It does not mean that God starts working when you pray. The truth is that God has already done everything in regards to you before you pray. Your prayer then helps you appropriate and apprehend all these things that God has supplied. Through Jesus dying on the cross, God has made supplies for us. Supplies through our redemption, our salvation, our providence. Through prayer, we then get to receive these things that God has for us. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these things that you need, that you seek, shall be added unto you. A verse preceding that says that your father knows what you need before you even ask. So this should give you the mindset that God has already prepared your supply. When you pray, you are going to take your supply that he has for you, what he has in store for you. Your prayer does not put pressure on God to try to meet up your demand. Your prayer does not put God in a place of emergency. No matter how urgent your prayer is or you feel like your need is, it doesn't make God be in a place of emergency because everything you need is already in store. The healing you need, the spouse you need, Everything you need, God has them already prepared. Since God has everything you need in store for you, all that remains is for him to prepare you so that you can receive these things. Prayer is not a magic wand that gets you to receive all your desires and ambitions. But prayer is a faith act that gets you to receive all the things that God has planned for you. So which is to say in prayer, you receive what God has already released. Our healing was already paid for and prepared. Whatsoever that need is, God has it already made. It is your place in prayer to appropriate it. In John 14, 14, Jesus said, yes, Ask me anything in my name and I will do it. Number two, in prayer, you ask, not beg. You do not beg when you are praying, when it has to do with God. You need to ask. What's the difference between asking and begging? When you're asking someone of something, it means you ask and expect because you know the person has the capacity to do that for you. So you only make that request knowing that the person can do it. A beggar only operates on presumption. They presume you could have it. So they beg with little or no expectation. So when you ask God, you are not trying your luck. You should know what you want, requesting and expecting, not requesting without expecting. Begging shows no faith. Begging is not an act of faith. Faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen, which means faith has expectations quoted in it. When you come to God to pray, know that he is your father. You should know his heart that he wants to give. You should know that he has abundance. Paul said, and my God shall supply all your needs according to his riches in glory. How rich is God in glory? How rich is heaven? So what do you need that he cannot give? So when you come to God, you ask, expecting that he will do it. And then leave the rest. The answer will come from him. If he will or if he will not. That does not mean that you doubt his power to do it. That does not mean that you doubt his ability to do it, to perform what you ask him to do. Everything that God gets to do with you when you pray, he does it for your own good. If God says no to something you ask, it's for your own good. It does not mean he does not have the power or the ability to bring it to pass. It means that he has seen ahead of you and he knows that the thing may not be good for you or it's not yet time. Probably you're not yet ready to get these things. So whatsoever you ask God, whether in the area of relationship, marriage, in the area of 
work, career. God checks your heart when you ask. The act of begging is not prayer to God. You can't flatter God with your emotions. He knows your heart. Your emotional tantrums don't get to him. Coming to him, trying to flatter him with words of how you sing for him forever, how you stick to him forever, how you do this if he does that for you, it's not a transaction. Note that it's a relationship. The scripture says you do not have because you do not acts. He didn't say you do not have because you do not beg. And he said anything you ask in my name, I will do it. Not anything you beg in my name. So get this difference so that when you pray, you know that you are not in the dimension or in the place of begging. You are in the place of asking, knowing your father's heart, knowing that he loves you, knowing that he wants to give you everything good for you because every good and perfect gives comes from the father of light. Point number three. Your prayer is not to alter God's will. It is to align with his will. The process of you praying is not to change what God has willed. It is for you to align with what he has willed. Jesus expressed this in a moment where he was very sorrowful and heavy in his soul. Jesus at this moment in his life went to the father and said, this is what I desire. Let this cup pass. But then he didn't stop there he said, but let it not be my will, let your will be done. This is showing us, I'm not trying to alter your will, Father, but then I have a desire too. So prayer is not to come and fake to God that you don't have desires, that your desires are not true. No, you have true desires and you want these desires to be fulfilled. But then your prayer should not be to try and alter the Father's will, which means it's a place of surrendering your own desire to God's will to the Father's will. Jesus showed this when he said, let this cup of suffering be taken away from me. Let actually shows a place of certainty, like a place of, this is what I really want. But then he said, not as I will, but your will be done. Check what happened. In the progress of him keeping on asking, he was surrendering his will. He came to a point of saying, if this cup cannot be taken away from me, that will be done, not mine. That is surrendering. This is a point that shows us it is about surrendering our desires to God. But this is what I will tell you. Always, when you pray, tell God your desires. God can handle your vulnerability. God can handle your transparency. God can handle your honesty with him. He wants you to be honest with him. Tell him, Father, this is what I want. This is the type of person that I want in my life. This is the type of job I want. Tell it to him. Let him decide in his will. But then, always, when you tell him your will, be so humble to surrender your will to align with his. The fourth point, praying to God will prepare you and strengthen you for what is ahead of you. When you pray to God, it will build courage in you. Whatsoever happens as you are moving forward, you have his backing. Knowing that you've communicated your father on the things you want to do and you go ahead doing it, that anyhow this thing turns out, I'm strengthened, I'm prepared. David, David in 2 Samuel 5, when the Philistine came against him, asked God, should I go up? And God told him at the first time, go up and you will conquer them. I will deliver them into your hands. Again, when the Philistines come up again, David did not assume that since he asked God the first time and God told him, go, that he should just go. He went to inquire of God again. And God said, do not go up. Imagine if David did not go to ask of God, to inquire of God. Every time, you need to cultivate the habit of inquiring of God. Because prayer is a process of inquiring from God to know that you have his backing on the journey. The fifth point, prayer will change you and change the situation and things. And we are confident that he hears us whenever we ask anything that pleases him. Prayer will change you. For you to come to a place that you are asking God things that please him, you have been changed. Because the natural human has desires. And most times when we go to God, we place our desires to him. God, this is what I want. Please do it for me. But then when you come to a place that your prayer becomes you asking God what pleases him. You praying according to his will. That is a place that you have been changed. And since we know he hears us when we make our request, we also know that he will give us what we ask for. Because we've come to this place of confidence that God hears us when we ask him, we can also be confident that he will give us what we ask for. Because what we ask for pleases him. Hallelujah. Thank you so much for watching this video to the end. Don't forget to give this video a thumbs up. Let me hear from you what happens when you pray in the comment section. Subscribe to this channel. My name is Wem Apan. Become a part of this community. Share this video and watch the next video also. See you in the next video. God bless you.